Hey everyone, so we're jumping back into our dungeon series. <laughs> I figure now is a good time to go over Ash Magisteria because we do have a Dragon Cup Rally here tomorrow uh, for Ash Rally. On top of that, I still think Ash is the best dungeon to run <laughs> uh, considering the gear that is in this dungeon. Uh, I will say, though, that the... The other dungeons have actually got a boost in value with this Rift of Chaos uh, stuff coming out. <laughs> uh, we also did get some news in Content Creator Chat this morning that these dungeons are going to be nerfed this week, which is really good. I mean, that is a smart move from the developers. This is way over-tuned. You know, some people, like myself, have been able to beat Stage 4, but I have, I mean, in my opinion, a pretty strong account my gear is still lacking uh i think a bit in comparison to a couple other people that play the game but i still have a fairly strong account and i am struggling really hard with anything stage five uh this stage five clear for green boss is just a cheese kind of strategy with levi it's got like a five percent win rate or whatever <laughs> so it's not really viable but thankfully they are nerfing these but uh like I said, the other dungeons have actually gained value uh, since the release of this. Like Queen of Tides, this revival gear used to be an early game gear. And now it's not only early game, but now it's late game. Because Rift of Chaos, I think, really boosts the value of revival gear. Um, and then in Roaring Tulpa, I think the Terra sets are, are pretty viable as well. There's <laughs> certain mechanics in Rift of Chaos where uh, you need like specific heroes to have the highest health to work for your team comps so having a terra set boost someone's health by 15 percent by having that two-piece set can really help with gearing heroes so those two dungeons have definitely gone up in value which was always good for the assassin set um, that is still extremely high value. It's a great PvP set, and it's also good on damage dealers for any of these dungeons. And on top of that, it is pretty nice in the Rift of Chaos stuff, too. So, all of that is good. Going back to Ash, though, I still think it's the best uh, dungeon to farm, although it is, you know, <laughs> more level now than it was in the past. This used to be the only dungeon. Uh, that I thought was worth farming other than maybe uh, Witch of the Wind from time to time. But anyway, uh, with that being said, you know, this speed set is still king in the game. It's good in everywhere, uh, and it has even more value with Rift of Chaos now. So I am bringing you uh, the dungeon series for Ash Magisteria today, so let's just jump right into that. So some of the main mechanics for Ash Magisteria. He has these little imp minions, right, that kind of hang out around him, and there's five of them. Um, you know, whenever you're first starting out, uh, I think <laughs> there's one or two. I don't even know if they're available or they're on, you know, the very beginning stages. But eventually, you have to deal with, uh, I think, four of them on stage 12. And then Hell Stage 2, it goes up to five and then Hell Stage 4, it is also 5, but you have to kill them twice. Um, so it's pretty interesting. But you really need to uh, bring in people that can do AoE damage or kind of a proxy AoE damage, which we'll get into here. Um, but you need to do that because if not, these imp minions kind of uh, do a joint attack with the boss and you'll die just really quickly. Uh, the other thing is, is he does recover health. Uh, so a hero with unhealable in his kit is kind of nice. It's not important, but it is something that uh, is a bonus if you're trying to do some kind of speed runs. Um, it's not necessary, but that is one of his mechanics. He also does AoE damage plus single target damage. Like I said, he uses those... <laughs> Oh, sorry. He uses those minions to join in on attacks. That's why it is important to kill them. Um, and then he also places a bomb similar to what we've been seeing in the Chaos Dungeons. Uh, it's on one person. And the nice thing is, is actually on the higher stages of Ash, he targets the person with the highest attack. So this is... <laughs> 
This is kind of nice because water has uh, a couple of heroes that have either like self immunity on their kit or they also have heroes that can cleanse that bomb. So uh, this is something that you need to be aware of with your team compositions, but it is one of the easier things to get around considering the hero pool um, that we have right now. And then last but not least, he does have this really big cannon attack, which I think becomes irrelevant in most of the team comps uh, because he only does it if you have fire imps alive. And a lot of the strategies in the later dungeons, you have to kill those minions or you're not going to survive anyway. So that's that becomes irrelevant. I did mention it here, though, because in stage 12, uh, like as you're progressing through the game, there is a cheese comp per se, uh, that does take in this big cannon attack. And we will talk about it briefly uh, for the newer accounts. So stay tuned for that. So the things that we're just really want to pay attention to on all of the stage 12 up through hell stage four is you need enough damage to kill the waves. You need someone for that debuff removal or immunity. Um, I should put that there. Okay. Um, and then enough damage to kill the imps at the boss. <laughs> he will reborn the imps, so you can't just kill him like once and then forget about it. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. So let's just let's take a look at the teams, right? Scaling up to stage 12. The very first thing uh, that we're going to look at is some of these formations, right? Now... A lot of these teams, especially like Team 3, these are heroes that are like Ascended 5, fully booked, things like that. Um, and they're just in there because of certain events that the uh, developers put out for the community whenever this hero is released and whatnot. But uh, taking a look at some of the compositions, you know, you'll see heroes like Nathalia, who's really amazing for clearing the waves and then also being able to kill the imps along with a nice dps on the boss you have william there as well uh, putting up counterattacks and defense down on the boss which is very very nice he was you know a fantastic hero whenever all of these dungeons first came out but with more and more uh, heroes being released uh, there are much faster ways, but he is still a fantastic character, especially for newer uh, accounts. And then Aaron was uh, an Attack on Titan hero, uh, who's fantastic, but if you were not around for that collaboration event, uh, sadly this comp will not work for you. But thankfully, there's tons of other comps out there. So the one comp that I did want to talk about, which, uh, which people should look up whenever they have a chance... If it is still down here, I'm sure it hasn't been used in a long time. But if it is not here, man, it's way at the bottom. If it's even here. Okay. Well, I guess we'll just go here. So it's this team comp right here. <laughs> pretty, pretty simple. Uh, Ice Wolf is actually a common hero, but he has a counterattack uh, ability. And then Mary is in here as well for uh, Invincible. And then you have Nathalia, like we were talking about, to clear the waves and do damage on the boss, as well as Santis, who's a poison hero, which is kind of relevant in Rift of Chaos water boss as well. Um, so this is a great team for new beginners. Uh, if you want to go to this video in-game and check out... Uh, Ayumi Love's video, this is still relevant today. It's actually much easier to build nowadays, though, because of books. Uh, whenever this video was made, it probably didn't have books. So go check that out. That's definitely your easiest path forward uh, for Stage 12. I do want to talk about Stages uh, 14 and 16, though, okay? We're going to get into some of these mechanics. So this team for stage 14 is exactly what we were talking about on our sticky note right enough damage to kill the waves which you definitely have that between Ciara and Nathalia <laughs> along with some you know added 
uh, help with Opal if you don't have enough DPS on these two heroes. The other thing is this debuff removal or immunity. So if Opal is your highest attack hero or Nathalia, Nathalia has immunity uh, on her uh, <laughs> in her kit. So you're actually able to get around the bomb, you know, almost a hundred percent because she'll always have this immunity buff up. Opal as well on her basic ability, uh, once she joined attacks and all of that stuff, her kit is kind of interesting. Uh, I'm thinking about making a hero guide on her today, actually, to coincide with this. Uh, she has buff uh, debuff removal on her in her kit as well. So. Either of these two heroes are probably uh, this uh, comp's uh, highest attack hero to avoid the bomb, like we were talking about. And then, obviously, the enough damage to kill the imps is something where Ciara and Nathalia also come in. So this type of comp, probably very, very uh, consistent. And it does use you know two epics and then also a free synthesis hero. All you're missing is Opal, which was also a Magic Pass hero not too long ago. So, um, I'd say this is one of the more accessible teams <laughs> for sure. Aaron, like I said, is one of those uh, Attack on Titan heroes. Maybe you weren't around. Florence is going to be, you know, one of the key heroes for sure, um, you know, to do speed runs. And I'll show you my team here real quick just to show you the mechanics of this of this dungeon. And uh, maybe you can draw some inspiration off of that. Rosalie is going to be fantastic. There are also, you know, comps out there where Rosalie can solo or she needs, like, one hero with her, um, like Savannah or something like that. Uh, I don't know if there's a two-man team down here or not. Maybe on stage 16. Okay, it doesn't look like... I'm seeing the two-man team there. But Rosalie also has uh, buff removal on her kit. But you'll see in the hero report here, Savannah's there <laughs> to give uh, her additional attack. So uh, a bunch of di different comps, right? So if we go to my team, I'll talk about the mechanics a little bit and why I built this the way I did. Uh, so I was test running a team there, but I will show you my actual speed team. So... Uh, I use Nathalia, and then I use the extremely free-to-play friendly. Uh, that was a joke, by the way. Uh, Shane and Florence. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see what I'm talking about here. So on stage is uh, Hell Two, right? This is just Hell Four. On Hell Four, uh, you'll see once we get to the boss, I actually have to kill the minions twice. Uh, but Let's get to that point first. So right here, all I'm doing is using Florence and Shane, you know, to buff up my team, to help clear these waves. Um, they're mainly there for the boss to do, you know, additional damage on the boss. But they do help me clear uh, this first wave with just Nathalia. So uh, I do have my team kind of tuned so... Nathalia can't kill this last imp with enough damage, but that allows my opal to get her joint attack up. Uh, so whenever these imps die, as you'll see here, um, that she'll get additional turns, which is part of her kit. So here's Nathalia. She goes. She killed the imps once, and then she killed them again with her bonus attack from the Florence. And then opal, as you see here, just does so much damage uh, with the Shane and Florence. Uh, the boss heals up there a little bit. There's that firebomb uh, that I was talking about. But if Opal attacks enough, uh, you'll see that uh, right there, she actually removes that firebomb from her. So if I didn't have as much damage uh, as I have right here to kill the boss just within two turns, uh, this would be relevant. So you know, you guys don't need uh, this much damage, obviously. You'll eventually scale to this point once you farm enough gear. You have enough gear to put on your heroes to do speedruns like this. Um, but this is what a typical speedrun would look like 
you know, for me. And then you just run in the background because it's 100%. But there are uh, much, well, there are slower teams out there that don't require booked heroes or anything like that um, because, you know, my team, oh, there's the two-man team for stage 16. That's pretty funny, isn't it? Um, and here's my team. But there are teams out there that uh, do not require the champions that I have here. It's just I have them, so I might as well use them. It's consistent, and it's a minute run. You know, there's plenty of faster teams out there, but that's what I do. So same kind of strategy here. You know, uh, on the waves, you'll have uh, William put up the counterattack and the defense up to give Nathalia more buffs to increase her damage as well as uh, be able to do uh, damage to more than one hero. You have Ciara doing the AoE to kind of wipe up the waves and then also help kill the minions. You probably need a really, really strong Ciara to make this work, I would think. Either a really strong Ciara or a really strong Nathalia. Um, right now, my, my Nathalia, as you saw, actually has some pretty quick speed. She does not need to be this fast. You can definitely increase her damage output uh, in order to help kill those minions. Um, so teams like that definitely probably have a really strong Ciara, a strong Opal to maybe kill uh, the boss pretty quickly. And then, you know, you see other heroes here like Pluto, which uh, we'll talk about here in a second. Zitlin is also really good. Jonathan as well. This is, this is probably a nice uh, sustain uh, low budget team considering this was a seasonal hero. You know, um, if you saved up accordingly and used your stones efficiently, uh, you could at least get one copy of Rosalie. And then you have a lot of sustain with Jonathan for the AoEs uh, as well as Hakran and then using Nathalia to eat up the bomb so you don't have to worry about uh, a cleanser. So... A lot of, a lot of nice heroes for this dungeon. It's it's ironic, you know. It's one of the most important dungeons in the game, and yet I think it's probably one of the easier ones to, uh, to complete. <laughs> you know, in the past, it was kind of gated by Nathalia, but I think if you have a strong enough Ciara, um, you could definitely beat it as well as having a strong enough Rosalai. So there are more options out there nowadays than what there were in the past but let's uh let's talk about the index real quick talk about some heroes that are viable you know uh i do want to bring up real quick that uh that ice wolf if i can find him Okay, they don't have him here. Uh, he is a common, I believe. Oh, Ice Wolf. Duh, blue. Okay. <laughs> so here's the Ice Wolf. He uh, grants counterattack to all team members. So basically he's there to grant counterattack to your team, and then you use a reborn spell to bring him back and put it back up again. So pretty neat. Uh like I said, there's dedicated videos to that, but he is definitely a viable option. On top of that, there is an elite as well uh, that I know there's also some videos out there as well. And I just made a video about Arena on him, which is Joseph. So he has this uh, ability to remove negative effects, aka he can cleanse the bomb. Uh, and then he also grants uh, people an additional turn. So he's also very good for the Ash Dungeon. Uh, and there's specific comps around him uh, for sure that, that can make him work. Okay, so for epic and legendaries in the in the water section, Ciara, like I said, fantastic hero for this dungeon. She has this amazing passive that, you know, a lot of end game players are actually using Ciara now for the most speed runs, like the fastest speed runs. It's funny, I'm I made a I made a video. <laughs> talking about, uh, you know, who to use your books on. And I said Ciara is actually a pretty nice hero, you know, to book, especially for new players, because she can be synthesized. So 
if she's your first hero, you know, you're able to get through adventure mode, and then she just scales really well with the game uh, for these dungeons. So I, I still think that she's a great booked hero, uh, and she's used in almost all all of the speed run teams other than a team like mine, um, you know, in, in Ash Magisteria. She's also used in Witch of the Wind as well. So uh, great hero for this dungeon. There was a time where I thought Thor was going to be viable, and a book Thor might be um, because he does have an AoE, and it might be enough damage to kill the imps at least once. Uh, but I do think you have better options. Opal, as you just sh as you just saw, does so much damage you know, to the boss, um, pairs extremely well with Nathalia, pairs extremely well with Flarence, because Flarence has, you know, on her trait or her passive, I can't remember which one, uh, if you do enough attacks with uh, the person's basic attack, uh, you'll do splash damage, and Opal alone can take out some of the imps. So Opal is like queen of ash, in my opinion, along with Ciara. Uh, it's just depending on who you want to book. Uh, I ended up booking Opal over Ciara, so I just use Opal. Tia, um, she's more of a PvP hero. Uh, I do think she probably has some merit as an AoE uh, attacker. She also has Freeze, so that is interesting. Um, but she's probably not your top choice. So Pluto, fantastic. He was built for Ash Magisteria, actually. But he's now irrelevant uh, just because, you know, books came out and things like that, and he just... He's not needed. You can get enough damage from your other heroes. And most of his damage just comes from his trait, which allows him to use his ultimate if there's four or more enemies. Uh, and as you saw there, uh, with the boss and the minions, there's definitely more than four. And his alt does true damage based on 10% of the target's max health. So the bosses have tons of health. Um, so he's able to do this ultimate twice. So he can kill the minions on his own, and then he can uh, do nice damage to the boss. The thing is, is as you saw with my team, I killed the boss in two turns. So um, him being there is probably for someone who doesn't have as much damage output as I was showing. He's a great progression hero through Ash. So if you have him, I don't think you need to book him. Um, he's probably great for your progression, but I don't think he's going to be in your end game uh, speed teams. But for progression, great hero. Same thing with uh, Halia. So Halia is a great progression hero because she helps you deal with the speed barriers, right? On her ultimate ability, she gives everyone speed, and that carries over into the next round. Fantastic hero. Um, but she will not be in the end game speed teams. You do have to worry about Halia a little bit because her special ability grants someone a uh, bonus attack. But if you have Nathalia or Opal, you know, where you're consistently removing that bomb, <laughs> um, then Halia is fine. Tashir, no. Malhex used to be uh, one of the speed team heroes. <laughs> it's so funny. It was like maybe a year ago, but uh, he has since fallen off. Uh, Hydrissia, again, you know, all of these heroes are probably okay for progression just because she does AoE damage. He does AoE damage as well, can uh, put, you know, defense down on the boss. But overall, they're not used in most comps in the end game because they just don't provide enough damage. Um, whereas, like, in comparison to Nathalia and Epic, which we're going to talk about here when we get down to her, um, yeah. It, the output is just not there in comparison to her. So Blackhorn, I actually used Blackhorn a, a while back uh, before books came out, you know, f to cleanse the bomb. But since then, since books came out, uh, progression in dungeons has gotten a lot easier. Uh, you know, obviously the community was hard at work and put out some really great teams. So Blackhorn was really... Uh, phased out pretty quickly he has gotten a lot of value though recently because the rift of chaos dungeons um he's been almost mandatory in two of them for me um there are teams that don't use him but he he has a lot of value now in those areas uh but i used him for progression in ash as well until i was able to get enough dps because he has great heals attack down on his basic and he also removes the bomb uh, with his little totem uh, S2. So 
fantastic hero for progression, just not going to be in your end game kind of teams. Grayson, another one, you know, Zulus, who's another content creator, showed uh, the power of this guy in uh, Ash. He's also kind of mandatory right now, you know, pre-nerfs to the Chaos Dungeons for the Fire Chaos boss. I used him um, in the Fire Chaos boss to beat Stage 4, so he, he is relevant there as well, and he's also pretty good in uh, Ash Magisteria. So um, if you have him, you know, if you use your matrixes on him, I'm sure you have plenty of options, but he is still viable there. Alune, I still haven't found a use for her. Nero actually is in some of the uh, in-game teams as well. He puts that uh, kind of like 50% uh, healing unblockable up, and he's a great nuker for the waves as well. Um, and if you have him A5, he makes the speed requirements a little easier to uh, achieve, so you can build a whole lot of damage on your team um, while being slower than what the usual criteria is. So Lyerly, uh, this is so funny. I When I made the legendaries that need buffed, I had Lyerly on there, but she has been proving to deal a lot of damage from her ultimate ability um, on these Rift of Chaos dungeons, which is pretty cool. Uh, on top of that, she is kind of a niche pick in RTA. Um, you know, I've mentioned her a couple times in About Machine, who uses him, who uses her in... Uh, his RTA teams, you know, with Aurea or or Ralph. So she's actually pretty cool. And I'm assuming her ultimate probably does decent damage against Ash as well. Um, so she's probably a, a character worth building just because she has been uh, gaining some value in the game with the Rift of Chaos releases. <laughs> uh, however, you know, hold off on booking her or anything like that. It's just uh, she may be a decent DPS uh, hero for Ash uh, in progression uh, cases. So more to come on her. <laughs> so Miyakasa, another attack on Titan hero, along with Aaron, which we've already talked about. I think there is a bleed comp out there that utilizes her, um, but I do think there are better, faster teams. So she's more of a guild boss in guild versus environment hero right now. Therese is not going to be someone that you want in this dungeon. Uh, Aaron is fantastic in this dungeon, but obviously only the people that were around for the Attack on Titan collab can utilize him. He has this joint attack where uh, on, on his ultimate, he summons everybody uh, to do their basic ability with his attack, and then he can actually trigger it again just through his trade. So, fantastic hero. Pairs really nicely with Nathalia, um, Opal, Ciara, anybody in there. Uh, a lot of speed runs with him. Uh, Hyam's really not a choice here. Andre, same thing. Santis is actually uh, a really viable strategy all the way up to Hell 2 uh, with Gangello. And I will mention him. I'll just reference him real quick. Uh, actually, yeah. So Gangello and Shane. Sorry for the jump around. Um, so Shane, as you saw on my team, he just puts so much damage on people. And uh, he pairs so nicely with Opal for this dungeon uh, because Opal does attack outside of uh, her turn to do additional damage. That's why you saw her do so much damage in my run. So even though Shane is the negative... Uh, element here he is still a viable strategy if you pair him with the right team and you're able to kill the boss quick enough and, and then on top of that i was talking about gangello you know he was the king of dungeons for a long time still viable in uh, the uh, gemini dragon and he's also gained some value for the rift of chaos water dungeon which i did a video on a couple days ago so Gangello is still viable in Ash Magisteria up to Hell Stage 2. So pretty cool that uh, some wood heroes are still viable there. But anyway, back to the water. So Santis obviously pairs well with Gangello because he does additional damage uh, for poison damage over time effects. And Santis uh, on her uh, trait actually applies two stacks of poison uh, on each of her attacks. So pretty cool. Um, 
Santa's a great character, and also she's viable in Rift of Chaos as well, at least up to stage four, which is where I've used that team. So a uh, great hero, and she is viable in uh, Ash Magisteria up to Hell Stage 2. Kyle is a PvP hero. Hakran is another hero that I was utilizing with Blackhorn for progression myself. Um, you know, utilizing Nathalia and then having Hakran and Blackhorn there for increased sustain and then cleansing. So Hakran also scales fantastic with the game. He's a top tier RTA and arena unit. He's almost mandatory right now in these Rift of Chaos dungeons as they are currently. Um, just a fantastic hero, great for progression, and then even scales to the end game. William, as we mentioned, a uh, great hero. <laughs> he does uh, the counterattacks, one of, I think, one or two. He might be the only one that does an AoE counterattack to your team. Oh, other than the Ice Wolf, which I showed you. Uh, but he also has a AoE defense down, and then he has a joint attack on his basic for additional damage, and his trait actually increases the damage of all basic abilities to uh, your team members. So, fantastic support. Um, he has been just phased out a little bit, you know, a little power crept uh, with all of these crazy heroes that they've been putting out, but uh, still... <laughs> Very viable for progression. Um, you saw he was in the top team for Hell Stage 4, so still a great unit. Uh, Virgil, note, Hori, uh, he may have a little bit of, uh, of potential here, but his brother Bachi is much better in this scenario just because he ignores 100% defense. Bachi has scaled pretty well with the game as well. He's like an endgame top tier unit for RTA and Arena. I made my arena video about him um, being able to kill tank compositions. And he's also fantastic in Ash. And he's been pretty good in the Chaos Dungeon for Fire as well for me. He was the main reason why I beat Stage 4. Um, so yeah, he, he has this roller bomb effect where he actually ignores up to 100% of defense if he is Ascend 5. So he can be a great damage dealer, similar to what I was showing you with Opal. So he can be really good there. Galeno, is his use is not really here. <laughs> uh, Noela, I think that's how you say her name. Uh, she could be a, a nice, viable, uh, freer-to-play option than Opal. She does uh, some decent damage, I think. She also can remove uh, the bomb on her ultimate. So this is something uh, to mention. She also has defense down, too, on her ultimate. So pretty cool. I think she can be a pretty good damage dealer. The sad thing is, is I think she won't really be viable unless you put books in her, and I think there are better options, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Um, Hazel is a really good hero, but she is not, uh, I think, viable for Ash. Timmons, however, is. Uh, he has a really cool trait where uh, whenever an ally attacks an elite or a boss, uh, and there are three enemies alive. He launches a bonus attack with his ultimate ability, which actually is an AoE. So he can definitely come in and help kill the minions for Ash Magisteria. Uh, I know Zulus again made a video about him. This is this video is just about Zulus, <laughs> but uh, showing him, you know, being able to beat stage sixteen as well uh, to take down those those little uh, fire imps. So. Uh, great option in Timmins. Myla is is not an option here. Jonathan, we did show one of those team comps. Uh, he's fantastic. Attack down, defense down on everybody. He also puts up that huge shield. I use him in RTA. Fantastic there. He's also one of the main heroes for Rift of Chaos progression right now. So uh, if you invest in Jonathan, there are team comps out there for Ash. Fantastic. And he even scales in multiple other areas of the game. So pretty cool. So when I was mentioning uh, Noela as a pretty good damage dealer, I, I said that she does need books, but uh, she's probably not the right person. Rosalind, I think, has a lot of potential. And I've started to book her myself because I think she is going to be the key to the fire uh, Rift of Chaos dungeon, but she can also put out a crap ton of uh, damage against Ash Magisteria as well, similar to, you know, an Opal. 
Uh, she will be your main boss killer. Uh, she won't help you with the imps or anything like that. That's most likely going to be up to Nathalia or Ciara. Um, but uh, she does put a lot of damage out with her ultimate. And then she does like bonus attacks uh, depending on rage <laughs> and things of that nature. And then she also ignores uh, defense based on uh, the amount of times that she, you know, uh, hits an opponent. It, it says here every fourth uh, instance of damage on the same target ignores 60% uh, of the target's defense. So great DPS hero. I'm sure she's great in Ash. Um, once she's fully booked, I'll probably give her a go in there and just see how she does. But definitely a viable option. Uh, Helmar I haven't found any uh, use for. This Daphne character was just released with uh, the new samurai, new samurai guy. Um, this hero actually, I think, could be really good in Ash. Um, she gives your team some sustain uh, with this heal over time and attack up. She also counterattacks and removes negative effects. So whenever she gets a negative effect, um, she'll remove it uh, and then uh, reduce the ultimate ability. So I think this is a great hero for anyone coming into the game for progression in Ash. Uh, you'll definitely want to make her <laughs> um, the highest attack hero, though. Um, if you don't have Nathalia, because she can remove the uh, the bomb with her with her uh, passive slash special ability, so really cool hero. Um, I I think that she is extremely viable for Ash Magisteria. Uh, Lodric, I don't think he's viable here. Nathalia has has been the queen of this dungeon for I don't know how long. You know, uh, she does single target damage, but she has a trait that essentially makes her damage AoE. Uh, for each positive effect on her, uh, she attacks one extra enemy. So if she has one positive effect, she'll attack two people. Uh, two, she'll attack three. Three, she'll attack four. And then if there's four, she attacks all enemies. Um, so that's important wording because there are more than four enemies in the ash magisteria dungeon so if she has four positive effects on her she'll do damage to everybody and if she's ascended uh she's an old school hero so she only needs to be ascended to which is basically no longer a thing in this game uh she gets uh 40% increased damage if she has four or more positive effects on her so great damage dealer uh, she actually resets her ultimate ability when she kills someone, which is pretty often. So great for clearing waves and great for the imps. And she does okay damage against the boss um, himself. Uh, <laughs> so Poros is actually a hero that was introduced for the Rift of Chaos dungeons. Um, I think he's viable here, but he does need to be Ascended 5, I think, to replace some of the other heroes that we've already talked about. Um, so definitely viable and i will say that if you do a5 him your resources probably aren't going to be wasted because he is looking like another hero that may be key to beating the fire uh, rift of chaos dungeons so poros pretty cool addition there can be viable in ash as well but you're going to have to sink a lot of resources into him um, and then we have Lydia, who's PvP hero, and then Afroween, who is also a PvP hero. But I do think she probably has some viability in PvE. She's just a great unit. Like, her kit is broken. But um, <laughs> I think right now people haven't been utilizing her, uh, you know, in PvE. But that's that's what I wanted to talk about. We went over, you know, that one common uh, strategy with Ice Wolf. You should look that up on YouTube. You know, support the other content creators that have already made videos about it. You have uh, Joseph, the elite hero that I was using in my arena team uh, to help beat, you know, f speed teams or uh, tank teams. So he's another great option. There's uh, fantastic videos out there already showing that comp with him. Uh, as I mentioned, Shane and Gangello for Wood. Definitely options. Uh, there as well. Uh, Shane, you saw in my own comp, and then we just went over all the water epic and legendary. So that is the dungeon series on Ash Magisteria, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you on the next one. See ya.